Well, hey folks, we're going to take a look at the Solo app. Solo is an app that is designed for gig workers, for delivery and rideshare workers, and it is meant to do a couple of things. Uh, one feature they have is one that we won't be able to look at because it's not available yet in my market, and that's called a Smart Schedule, and then there's a Pay Guarantee feature. With, that's something that they're rolling out. They're in 25 different markets as I record this right now, and they've been expanding on a very regular basis. So hopefully soon we can take a look at that, and that will probably be in a different video and a different blog post. But for this one, we want to look at what they call their business in a box. Uh, they have several features where they allow you to track income and expenses, and we're just going to take a quick look at what the app looks like. As you can see on my screen here, you can kind of we see my app moving around. This is the home page of the Solo app. And it'll probably look a little bit different on your phone. Some of the fonts look a little bit different when I put this onto a desktop or cast it onto a desktop. So it's got a little bit better look when it's on your phone than it does on here. But hopefully you can kind of see stuff. And there are four tabs across the top here. Uh, home, Income, Expense, and Taxes. And then there are a few icons down at the bottom. So we'll look through each of those and take a look at what they do. Now, the home page gives you an overview of what your earnings and expenses are like for the week. But the weird thing about it is today is the 20th. And for some reason, they've already decided they want to kick ahead to the next week. And nothing has happened that week. So there's no earnings. There's no income like that. And unfortunately, there's no way to set the date based on what you're doing. But they give you an overview as far as your average earnings, your expenses, your estimated annual taxes, and there's a few things like what accounts you have linked for making payments and for receiving referral payments and different things like that. So, And then there are the apps that you have linked to the Solo app. The way Solo works is that they link to your driver account and that way they can pull some of your information and some of your job information. And then they can use that to put this kind of into your dashboard and everything so that you can see your earnings and then you can add expenses and they'll do mileage tracking and all those different things. I think the concept is great. I really like the idea of what they're doing. In practice, there are probably some things that they'll need to tweak, kind of like this thing here where you can't, you can't take a look at your past week like this you can't you can't adjust that now you can go to income here and now you can choose whichever week you wanted to look at and and the funny thing is here it won't let me go to the 21st through the 27th that was showing on the home page but which is all right because that week hasn't started yet one thing i kind of like here it's just a nice little quick look at how you're doing is that they give you your average per hour and like I said, because they pull the data from your driver accounts, and some people don't like having them do that, but because they pull that information from your driver accounts, they can tell how many hours you are actually logged in available, and they can actually calculate an hourly average for you. I kind of think that it probably must get a little tricky for them to figure that out if you're multi-apping. Anyway, like here you see 2105 here and the Denver average is 1719. So you get a little bit of feel for how you're doing compared to other drivers. And then you can kind of see what you did by platform. I just went out a couple of times on DoorDash, mostly, you know, testing out a couple of features on DoorDash for other things and videos and stuff. And then at the bottom, you have a place where, let's say I do deliveries for Deliver That, for instance, and they're not able to link to your account for deliver that so you can add that manually if you click on this plus once you've clicked on the plus you can say your source of income was deliver that and you can choose your date you can even put in how many hours so it will continue to calculate your hourly amount for you and then there's a place for other or whatever for the platform and you know, so that way you can still choose if maybe for some reason you needed to enter something for some of the platforms you're already on, you could choose those or you could stick with the other, which is what this is. And category is rideshare, grocery, food, parcel, or other. And we'll just say food. So 
that way you can enter in, you know, manually enter income if for some reason Solo isn't tracking that information. Expenses is where their mileage tracking is and where you also enter other expenses. Now, Solo does automatic mileage tracking. You'll notice when you look through the app, there's nowhere to actually start and stop recording deliveries. Uh, they didn't add that feature. They just automatically track. The problem with that is I run into several times that the app is not tracking. So I'm hoping that's something that they get fixed here soon enough, eventually enough. But, you know, here then you see all of the different trips that it recorded, and then they can manually recognize that it's like, okay, if you had the DoorDash app on or you had these other apps on, uh, that's a pretty good indication it was a work trip. So it automatically classifies it as work. I like that feature. Once again, I'd like it even more if it worked all the time. You know, I had a pretty significant trip that is missing on here. And now what Solo tells you is that you need to have the app open so that it can, you know, have the app open and in the background so that they can know that you're moving and everything like that. And which is different than a lot of apps that have the manual tracking because it can track anytime whether you've got the app open or not. Now, if for some reason something's kind of weird, you can edit your trip here. So let's say this little trip on the 19th. Let's say maybe that was a delivery trip. Maybe it was a delivery for somebody like Deliver That that I talked about earlier. You can do one of two things. I mean, one, you can pull up a map and it takes a second for the map to load, but it'll show where you went. And, you know, it's, it's a, if you kind of zoom in, you know, then you can kind of see where you were at with it and all the different movements with that and stuff like that. So you can kind of see the path of it. You can close that out. And then the other thing you can do is you can edit. If you click on edit, you can, and, and basically the only things, you'll notice that here, personal and the date and the times, those are all grayed out. You can't do anything with those. The only thing you can edit is whether it was personal or for business, and we'll say we switch to working time, or you can edit the miles, and there you go. So maybe it was 19 miles. Maybe it won't let me edit that. I'm not sure. Okay. And so now if we go back and now it changed, it updated that. Unfortunately, there's, there's no way to put details in there. And so here's the problem is, and, and this is the thing that I've run into a lot with Solo so far. I really do think that they're going to get this fixed eventually, but Solo misses trips. And for maybe if for some reason you forgot to open the trip. There is no option to add a trip. You can add an expense and you can choose your date and the amount of money, and, but there's no place to add that it was miles. There's car and mileage. The problem is you put that in there. It doesn't let you put in the number of miles. You could put that in the description, but the thing that I found out is if you download this list um, to get your stuff, Whatever you put in here doesn't show up on that download. So, you know, just, just some things that I think they're still figuring out. But there's really not a way to effectively add a trip that I can find on here if you missed it. You can also put in manual expenses because, once again, if you click the plus or if you go down here, the bottom, and you say add expense, you can choose. And they just have a very small list of items that you would do. Now with delivery and ride share, a lot of times there's not much more than that, but you know, there, there, there are some things like, uh, you know, getting snacks for snacks for customers or your, um, 
your chargers, you probably put that under equipment. Um, state taxes, I'm not, I don't get, I guess maybe in some states you might have to pay a tax for what you're doing, but uh, it, you know, I, I'm a little confused by some of the uh, categories that they chose, but you know, here's all the categories that you can choose. And if it doesn't fit, you can always hit other. And now your problem with, if you hit other, again, you can enter the name of the expense, but if, when you download it, that name or that description doesn't show up in the download. So hopefully that is something that they'll get fixed as well. Uh, so, but anyway, you can, you can add it. So it's, it's basically, it's a very, very, very basic expense tracking system. And um, you can then also go on to look at taxes. And what it will do is um, it's your estimated tax center. And what they do is they create projections. Now, uh, Solo does it basically as a flat rate. Uh, they do 15.3% for federal, which only covers self-employment tax. They don't have anything in their calculation that takes into account income tax. Uh, but they also have, you know, what they do is they take your expense, you know, your income and your expenses based on the mileage that they tracked, figure out the difference, your net income, and then they calculate what your taxes would be. And then state tax, uh, I, it, I believe that they do have keep up a chart in there of state tax rates. Um, they use a rate that at least used to be the rate in Colorado. The rate has changed. So, you know, and, and, and that's got to be a little hard to kind of keep up on all the different tax rates and stuff like that. But anyway, that's, that's kind of what they do with that. So the concept, I think, is really good that they do a lot of this stuff. And the idea is to make it easy so that it'll just automatically track most of this stuff. And usually the only thing that you would have to enter if it was working properly is those little one-off expenses. You buy a new delivery bag, you go and you buy some stuff for, you know, to give, you know, water bottles for your customers, different things like that, your Spotify subscription. You know? So, you know, it's, uh, I think there's, there's some good, um, good things in here. And there's a few extra things that we'll look at. We're going to look at, um, you know, at, there's there's the home page, and then you can click on here for the schedule. If you have, if your area has the smart scheduling, it has, you know, jobs is going to be all the different schedules that they've got laying out. And you can choose, you know, you can choose kind of a schedule. What they do is they guarantee, they say, um, Monday from 9 to 10, DoorDash will guarantee that you'll make this much on DoorDash. And from 10 to 11, we guarantee you'll make this much on Uber Eats or whatever. So you can see all the best times to deliver. You can select a time to go out, and they'll guarantee your pay while you're doing that. Um, it's an interesting concept, but uh, unfortunately, again, it's not available in my area. But like here you have jobs, and then you've got my schedule, which are the ones that you've had. And summary is, I'm guessing that's where it lays out. Here are the jobs that you chose, and here are you know, um, here's what you actually made, whether or not they have to pay anything extra. And that's where that PayPal or Venmo comes in is if you're using the smart schedule like that and you made less than their guarantee, they will actually pay the difference. Now, how can they do that? Well, there's a subscription cost to the app. It's, uh, if you're using the smart schedule, I think it's $7.99 a month. And that gives you 10 credits, which gives you 10 hours. And then you can buy additional credits for like a quarter a piece. And I think you can get them for a little bit less than that. Uh, but that's kind of how that smart schedule thing works. So, you know, right now, if I just hit on each of these things, it just comes back and says, hey, you want smart schedule in your area? Um, invite your friends in this area to get onto there. Because the more people that start using the app or that are gathering data on the app, the more that they can know what things are going to be like. So that's that's that feature down here. And so now we'll go over to, you know, here's the plus where you enter income or expenses. You can go to insights, which basically, you know, and, and here is another thing that I found is I can't choose my metro. All I can do is choose all metros. And this gives me an overview of what people are making right now on average. How accurate that is, I don't know. You know, I, I've heard a couple of people comment that they really doubt that DoorDash is really as low as 13 an hour. Um, 
nationwide, maybe it is. I don't know. And maybe if you got enough people that are taking everything, I don't know. But, you know, you can go down and you can see all of the, the major ones. These are the ones that they have relationships with around here. Grubhub, Lyft, Shipped, Instacart, Uber, Amazon Flex, DoorDash, Uber Eats. And finally, you've got a leaderboard function. Um, and I'm the only one that's showing up. I don't know if, and, and maybe it's because some people are, are on there as, you know, private or whatever. And so um, you can you can look at, you know, who's making the most tips, who has the most trips, and the weekly top earners, or you can select nationwide and get the whole list. And so again, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's it's really interesting. Um, right now we've got somebody in Pueblo, Colorado that is leading the leading the pack. So it's it's kind of it's an intriguing feature. I don't know if it's a very useful one because you can't you can't change your time periods and you can't really you know, select a whole lot. And, and it's hard to compare if you just go out a couple days a week, like I did this last week, it's hard to compare yourself with other drivers. And I kind of wish that maybe they had something about the hourly rate or something like that. It, it just, it's interesting. Over here, you've got some of your different settings. So here's where you can link your account with, um, they link up through a company called Argyle and you can choose, uh, you know, log in, log them into your account. Yeah, mileage tracker settings. And this is interesting because I thought, oh, okay, maybe that meant that I could then automatically, you know, if you do this, if you switch this over to manual, that it would automatically start tracking. And um, it doesn't. Uh, because what happens is, and when you're set on that, and now you go back and you go to the home page. And now you can toggle mileage tracking on or off, but from what I've noticed is it that doesn't really do anything about actually starting and stopping the trips. What that does is that just tells it that when you turn it on, anything you do is automatically business. When you turn it off, any driving you do is automatically um, personal. And that's all it does. So it works very different from a lot of mileage tracking apps. But anyway, that is, in a nutshell, this is what the Solo app looks like. It is, it's very interesting. Um, there, there are some things that, like I said, I think there are some things that they really need to work on to make this something. But if they get it working, it could be a pretty solid app for gig workers.